I'm Susan Alexander and welcome to this week's Funky Friday Anatomy Quiz and this week please keep watching till the end because I have included a special bonus gift for you. Question one, what is this muscle called, what does it do and what is its nerve supply? And to really test your knowledge, do you know what clinical sign you would see if this nerve were damaged? Now don't forget you can stop the video at any time if you need a little bit of extra time for these questions. Question two, what is the name of this bone and which other bones does it articulate with? Oh, and which tendon attaches to the medial aspect of this bone? Question three, where is the foramen spinosum found and which structures pass through it? Question four, which four paired arteries arise from the lateral aspect of the abdominal aorta? And question five, what are the boundaries of the quadrangular space in the upper limb and which structures pass through it? The answers. Question one, this is the serratus anterior muscle and it attaches to the anterior border of the scapula and also attaches to the ribs one to eight, so it wraps around the ribs. It is supplied by the long thoracic nerve of Bell, which arises from nerve roots C5, C6 and C7. The serratus anterior laterally rotates the scapula and it protracts the scapula, which means that it keeps the scapula tight against the chest wall. Now damage of the long thoracic nerve can cause weakness of the muscle and clinically this can be seen by a very prominent medial border of the scapula that sticks up posteriorly as the patient tries to elevate their arm. This sign is known as winging of the scapula. Question 2. This is the navicular bone and it is found in the foot. The navicular articulates proximally with the talus and distally with the three cuneiform bones, which are the medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones. It also articulates with the cuboid bone. It's the tendon of tibialis posterior which attaches to the medial aspect of the navicular bone. The tibialis tendon, or rather the tibialis posterior tendon, plays a very important role in the biomechanics of the foot. It helps to maintain the inner arch of the foot and this is known as the medial longitudinal arch. If the tibialis posterior does not function properly, then the arch can collapse, and this is known as flat foot. Question 3. The foramen spinosum is an opening in one of the skull bones. It is located in the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, just posterolateral to the foramen ovale. The foramen spinosum transmits the middle meningeal artery and the middle meningeal vein from the middle cranial fossa to the infratemporal fossa. Question four. The four paired lateral arteries of the abdominal aorta are the inferior phrenic arteries, the middle suprarenal or adrenal arteries, the renal arteries, and the gonadal arteries, which are the testicular arteries in males and the ovarian arteries in females. The quadrangular space is found in the posterior region of the shoulder girdle. It is formed by the teres major inferiorly, the teres minor superiorly, and in fact the subscapularis also forms the upper part of the quadrangular space as it is situated directly in front of teres minor. The long head of triceps forms the medial border and the lateral border is formed by the shaft of the humerus. The axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral artery pass through this space. Now the triangular interval and triangular space is very closely related to the quadrangular space and it is so easy to get them mixed up, which is why I think it's such a common exam question. So to learn more about these spaces and for a really clever learning tip to help you remember them, please click the link below for a special bonus video that I have created as a gift from me to you. So how did you do this week? If you liked our quiz, please share it with your friends comment below, let me know what you'd like me to cover next, and please stay funky!
Monkey.